for tuning in to another Mad Travelers Global Adventure. This week I return to West Africa, an entirely new country for me, Liberia, Africa's first ever republic. And I begin in the capital, Monrovia, which, believe it or not, is the wettest capital city on the planet, receiving a staggering 205 inches of rain per year. Now, living in England, of course I'm used to rain, but this is on an entirely different scale. And I'm here in the village of Namminstan, which is known for producing bricks. Liberia has hundreds of miles of unspoiled, pristine beaches. But folks, one note of caution, if you're a water lover, take care, because there's seriously strong riptides. And that's because just out maybe a few hundred meters is a sheer drop. So it makes for some interesting swimming. I'm now standing inside an amazing piece of Monrovia's history. This is the ruins of what once was the premier hotel in the city, the Duca Palace Hotel. Now, unfortunately, it fell into disrepair in 2003, which was the year, in fact, that the civil war here ended. But this is my opportunity, before redevelopment commences, to take a look inside. Well, I have to say, I am one lucky visitor here in Monrovia. Right behind me are the finest views of anywhere in the city. But look at this, this is just pure ruins. Now my hunch is that this former hotel will once again claim the crown of the finest place to be in the city. But for now, it really is just a derelict ruin with a few precarious spots, this being one of them, it's just a sheer drop. sometimes wondered why the lift takes so long to come. Well, the reason is simple here, it no longer exists. It's just a sheer drop. The historically strong cultural ties between America and Liberia are reflected in a number of monuments such as this one. This is a statue of Joseph J. Roberts, Liberia's first president. this year and as with many infrastructure projects these days in Africa these came courtesy of the Chinese one thing I can't help noticing here in Monrovia is that many people are trading with wheelbarrows now you might ask yourself why are these popular well it's because according to Jerome here they don't have anywhere else to sell they don't actually have fixed premises so these are perfect and mobile. After considerable searching, I finally found a place that sells bicycles here in Monrovia. Here it is. Now, all the brands are totally unfamiliar, but on closer inspection, the quality of these bikes isn't particularly great. The weight is a good giveaway, but if you need a bike and you're desperate, here's the place to come. passing the University of Liberia, the oldest of the country's four universities. I love my green vegetables and here in Monrovia I'd like to introduce you to two commonly eaten vegetables. This is the potato green 
and here is the water green. Now, the difference between the two, this is more strongly flavoured. It takes about 15 minutes to cook and you'd add it with rice or chicken or beef. And this is probably more akin to spinach that we know and uh, splashing myself with water there. And very, very watery and not as strongly flavoured. majority of ordinary Liberians don't have cooking stoves as we have in the West. They use coal and coal is sold in abundance here. Now a bag of coal like this will set me back much less than one US dollar, probably around uh, 20 Liberian dollars. Now this is just enough to produce one meal. I've now arrived at one of the many indoor general markets. And if it's clothes you're after, look no further than here. Now here you can buy pig's feet and traditionally you would boil this. It takes around 45 minutes and make it into a very delicious soup. Times call for desperate measures, and my esteemed cameraman Joshua and I are desperate to get into the city before the sun goes down. But with two bikes, one hour and ten miles, we weren't going to cycle, so we've had to get a taxi. But where are the bikes? Well, of course, one of them folds, it's in the boots, but the other on the roof. close to my hotel is Martha's Orphanage set up by the charity Brass for Africa which is run by my colleague Jim Trott and today they're practicing their musical skills. So we've been working for two days with the kids and this is brand new for them. They're reading music for the first time and they've done very well but it's a big big step so I just want to I want you to remember that as you listen to the band. It's more of an open rehearsal. So thanks for coming. And I think our honest guests from uh, Don Bosco School have arrived today. hard work, they get one of these. <laughs> now, I'm guessing that most people's perceptions of Liberia are those associated with a fairly dark past. But viewers, the past is long consigned to history and in 2013, Liberians are looking forward to a much brighter future. And part of that future lies with this lovely lady, Fanta, who runs the only luxury brand here in Liberia, Marazzetti. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. So, what's your story? What we do, we take the, the African fabric, the Ankara fabric. Okay. I pretty much use that to create Western shapes. So, we actually started that in about 2009. In Liberia, we realized that there was something missing and it was not having a 
like a store or even like a good boutique to go and shop for really cool items. Like we were able to um, open our first store in 2011 and that was doing extremely well. Yeah. So we decided to uh, expand. Okay. So Marizetti is a, an Afropolitan designer brand but a very vogue boutique. Well that's incredible. So it sounds like you've come a long way in a short time. We can definitely say that. At Marizetti we're very ambitious. Our creativity energy always has us on the run uh, looking for the new exciting things that would inspire us. Nowadays you don't just want to make things just for the sake of making things. Yeah. You have to be able to distinguish yourself and your brand. And have a stamp of individuality. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Another thing that we provide um, extremely well at Marizetti is our absolute uh, wonderful customer service. Right. Um, we educate our customers about the products. Uh, still, it's very much unheard of sure. in Africa, like the uh, notion of being serviceable. And do you think that's adopted from something American, you know, with the influence of American culture historically? Definitely. It's something that is American influence, considering my travels and uh, being, being fortunate to have seeked refuge in the West. For such a small country, we still yeah. have like more than 45% of West Africa's rainforest. We have waterfalls, we have a blue ocean so, and so white you, sand. You take an influence from the natural landscape. Absolutely. And Liberia is very rich in that. This was Fanta, a fascinating lady and of course part of a fascinating culture and that's Liberia. Well, thank you very much for your You're time. You're very welcome. Once you've enjoyed Monrovia's bustling downtown, how about heading out around 15 kilometers to the relative tranquility here on the Do River and $40 buys you a ride on a dugout canoe and I actually make the seat for you while you wait. Well, the seat's ready, the canoe's ready, so time to sail away. For a river that sits within the world's wettest capital city, you'd expect it to be green, and it is. It's beautiful. And one of the more interesting aspects of the flora are these trees, family trees, so-called, because their roots cluster together. Peaceful and serene as this river appears, this wasn't always the case. The Dupont River saw a very industrious use. 1926 was the beginning of a period where rubber from the Firestone rubber plantation was transported down this river and that lasted for 10 years and it was taken into the city. And then after that roads were constructed and of course the river transport system was no longer needed and the river resumed its more peaceful purpose. It's now time to taste those potato greens I bought earlier in the market here in a traditional Monrovian cafe. And they're served like this, oil-based, with meat and seasoned, of course. Let's taste them. Quite delicious. And not too dissimilar in appearance to that classic Indian dish, alu sag. Throughout this show, I'm showing you Monrovia and Liberia as it is today in 2013. But Liberia has a brutal and bloody past and a 14-year civil war ended as recently as 2003. So as you can imagine, many millions of Liberians alive today have stories to tell. Here are just a few. Hey, my name is Jay Black. I'm a Liberian. I love this country. As a youth, I learned a lot and I've seen a lot. But as a you, when I left in 1980, they assassinated Tuber. And my father in America, he knew a lot. So he came and got me. And since 1980, I've been in America, I learned a lot. It was a lot of division in my home in Liberia that I, it was really troubling me. I love America, but I really, really love my home. So when my father came and got me, I went to New York. <laughs> I loved it. God, I love it. But anyway, I came back home after 25 years. I really love my people. And the traveling that I travel, it helped me a lot. How to be an African-American. 
instead of just being a Liberian. You know what I mean? So when I came back home, I didn't bring all the gold and diamonds with me, but I brought myself in the knowledge and how to love my people. Came back in the Ellen Johnson reunion, which is after Tarba died, Samuel K. Kado came in, Chad Taylor came in, now we got Ellen Johnson in our reunion at Wishes the President. That was Jay Black's story. Now listen to Mitch's. I'm Liberian born. I left here in 1989, around the time the war was just starting. I went to the states, Minnesota, Maryland, Texas, New Jersey. I was there for over 20 years. I actually just returned back to Liberia in February of this year. So a lot of this area that I'm watching right now is, is still developing. From my understanding, from when I left, this place was more developed than it is now. The Civil War really took us back in time. So the State of the Union right now in Liberia is we're trying to rebuild this country to where it needs to be. I'm just one of those people that was fortunate enough to get out of here and come back here with the intention of building this country because I have been able to leave here and see more of the world so I'm kind of ahead of a lot of people that actually was here and went through the war and so forth. I've arrived on one of Monrovia's premier beaches, Miami Beach. It might look fairly deserted now but give it two hours it's church day so people will come out of the church in around one hour and you won't be able to see the sea for people so before it gets crowded I'm going to get myself some beach food. All looks delicious. Now, as I explained earlier in the show, the majority of Liberians don't have access to cooking gas. They use charcoal. And of course, on the beach, it's no exception. Fish on the beach. Perfect setting, perfect meal. My three days here in Monroe. 